Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, welcome back to Project 4 Link on the drag truck, um, any roll bar part 2, whatever you want to call it. We're working back on our 4 Link project again, so if you guys saw the last episode we started working on our Ami roll bar, which I already have this piece of tube in here as like a work platform, which I will probably take back out because we still have to finish welding our brackets on the axle and then we can get our anti roll bar in and get it tacked up to make sure everything's right double check all of our angles and then we can finish both those as well i did have the opportunity today at work um, during my lunch break to weld our um, these little gears for the um, billet arms on as you can see having the proper place to weld having a pedal i like welding tig with a pedal primarily which i don't get to do here in the garage um, got that all taken care of so those are welded on they actually do still slide on and off if i can get an allen wrench here So we can take the arms off or readjust them or whatever we might have to do. That's what the directions say. I don't really see any reason we'd ever have to um, take these arms off. I mean, if we decide to get rid of the roll bar or any roll bar at any point, all we'd have to do is probably unbolt our bearings and slide the bar out since we did cut it down. That's one thing before we tack the bearings in completely, we will double check to make sure that we can get this out. Um, we should, but I did leave a little extra meat hanging out of the bearings just as like a precautionary measure, um, but we should be good there. So we'll get this all dialed in after we get our brackets in. Once we know everything's good, we'll get our brackets or our bearings tacked up. Once we have those tacked up, we're happy with everything. We'll actually pull the anti roll bar back out so we don't destroy our bearings or screw them up at all. And we'll get those fully welded in. And then we will have our anti-roll bar completely installed. Really not a big deal tonight here in the garage. Um, we pretty much did all the figuring on this last night. Tonight we're just going to be double checking all of our angles, tacking things in, kind of working slow, and making sure we get that thing in square, make sure all of our rods are you know at the right angle, make sure everything's level, plumb, what have you, and just get this thing in there good and square. And then it's on to our coilover setup which i talked to some people today about the coilover setup here in the rear um really their first question was what does the truck weigh weight bias which i had to tell them i know that's information i need but i don't currently have but what i really want to know is what our distance should be from the axle up and all that i think no matter where we put our um crossbar here and our brackets for the top top shock top shock mount we should be good because these brackets that fire Punk includes in the kit have plenty of adjustability to them so we can go up or down but we just need to know what the spacing is going to be on these wow i'm all over the place tonight um but we need to know what the spacing is on these for a width then we can put a solid bar in there. We can get the jacks out from under the truck. And then if we have to roll the truck around, whatever, we can do it. Because right now, if we take the jacks out from under the truck, the whole suspension is just gonna kind of collapse onto the axle. So anyway, guys, that's what we're gonna do. Let's get these brackets welded up and we'll get our anti-roll bar in. All right, so we got everything tacked up. This is how it's gonna sit other than our uh, shaft moves. So I put the, I welded, fully welded the brackets to the axle. Um, 
all inside of there. It was a pain. I probably didn't need that much, but that's what we did. Um, I did forget to put our heim joints in there before we started, so it was kind of a pain. Yeah, this one's a pain getting out. But anyway, I should have had the heim joints in there to try and get the spacing right, so we had to massage them a little in order to get the, the heim joints started in the brackets and, and all that. Yeah. But other than that, it kind of lined right up. Um, I was able to get everything leveled. The, um, the frame's level, the brackets are level, the shaft's level, everything's looking good. Our angle on the back of our um, link bars is the same on either side. We'll get them straightened up when we come back here. But right now, we're gonna have to try and get it out, which I'm gonna have to take these bearings apart and then we can get the shaft out. We'll fully weld this, let it cool, put it all back together, all that kind of good stuff. But really nothing uh, magic here. I don't know if I gotta take both bearings apart or not, probably do. But this way, it's removable. If in the future, we decide the AMA roll bar is counterproductive or whatever. I don't think that'll be the case, but this thing will be removable, which is good. We'll have plenty of room once we get this all firing out. Yep, there we go. So our shaft is fully removable. We will uh, proceed to weld these fully up, reinstall this bad boy. We'll be sitting pretty. Our anti roll bar will be done and installed. So our anti roll bar is installed, our um, brackets are fully welded, then our links are fully welded, um, everything's bolted up, our arms are in, we had to replace this Allen screw with a one that is provided with some red Loctite on it. Um, our bearings are tightened down, everything fits in. If we ever wanted to remove it, all we have to do is unbolt our bearings, unbolt our links, we can take that thing out. Um, not a big deal. Now there is one little clearance issue. As you can see right here, I actually pulled the pan hard bar bolt out and swapped it around. So if we ever wanted to pull this bolt, we don't have to remove this. But as you can see, it is rather tight. So what we'll do is when we get a nut in there, we will actually cut that down so we will have room. I don't think it'll be an issue um, as everything should stay kind of where it's at with our four link bars and all that. Um, but if if it ever becomes an issue, there's always other things we can do. We can always move the location of the axle back a little bit if we had to, but I, like I said, I don't think it'll be an issue. We will have a good extra three quarters of an inch or an inch here um, of clearance once we cut that off. But other than that, I'm very happy with the result. I think everything looks good. Both, um, both of these are at our 14 and a half degree angle and our bars come down to the axle. Everything's looking good. Um, got a little bit more activity going on here around the axle now, but everything's looking good. Our forelink's looking good. Um, we do have to gusset our forelink, which I have to get some more inch of 5 8 uh, 083 wall tube, so we can put a gusset here, one up to the frame, maybe triangulate it in a couple places. But once we get our gusseting in, the four link will be done other than our coilovers, which we're gonna add another cross member here. And then we will have our coilover shock um, mounts, you know, top and bottom. But like I said, the brackets provided with the four link kit provide a lot of adjustability. So we don't need it to be exact. Um, we just need it to be pretty close. Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy with how everything's turning out. 
it's it's looking great. And with the clearance issue, like I said, it wasn't too bad with just the bolt in there. So when we cut that thing down, it's not really going to be an issue at all. But yeah, everything is definitely looking good. Um, we can adjust everything on the rear axle now. We can kind of do what we want with it. And that's all going to be part of learning the truck. So obviously we've made a ton of changes to the truck. Um, when we were trying to get the truck ready to go this, you know, for the end of the year here, trying to really get this thing to the track, we hadn't changed anything suspension wise. Shocks, shock locations, you know, nothing like that. We were going to th slap our ladder bars back on and the truck would be as predictable as expected or as, you know, previously. But now, we even though we have the four link dialed in so the axle should be perfectly square and lined up in the chassis with the coil overs all that once we figure out where what instant center we want by changing our bar locations which i'm going to have to do some more research and figure out exactly where we're going to want them aimed because we're going to want it i believe shooting up just above the center of gravity and that way the truck will actually separate and plant the tires and you know pull the body up so like i said i'm still learning all this and it's definitely going to take some time we're going to need a lot of testing which is good i like going to the track and testing um well i just like going to the track that's that's the truth there but we're gonna have to dial this thing in but man i'm i'm excited i think it's pretty gnarly i think people are going to come up to it thinking hey just look at the look at the truck you know beat up old white truck and wait a minute what is going on back there so i think that's pretty cool it's um something that if you followed like diesel drag racing is pretty common anymore having four links on these trucks but if you go to like your local track there's not going to be a lot of people who probably see it because we are in the minority in most at most track locations well unless you're at like an odss race so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed i hope you subscribe to the channel smash that like button Catch you guys on the next one. Get out in your garage. Get the wrench in on your truck.